Well, Hillary Clinton's defeat in November might have prompted some soul searching in the American press. Instead, the blame has been placed on, among other things, an alleged plague of fake news. And now, with one week until the inauguration, lawmakers are trying to use the scourge of fake news to influence what your kids learn in school. California Assemblyman Jimmy Gomez has, in fact, introduced a bill that would require schools to teach civic online reasoning in California. The goal, to tell students what news is fake, what is real, and shape their beliefs accordingly. Assemblyman Gomez joins us now. Assemblyman, thanks a lot for coming on. Thank you, Tucker. So um, you have written this piece of legislation um, that commands, if passed, will command the schools to do this, to teach, quote, the ability to judge the credibility and quality of the information found on Internet websites, including social media. How exactly will they do that? Tell so, fake uh, from real. So, Tucker, my, my bill, AV-155, the Fake News Act of 2017, uh, directs the Instructional Quality Commission to develop a curriculum with experts in education on civic online curriculum, uh, civic online reasoning, and how to include that into different courses, civics, history, mathematics, and science. And it will basically allow them to discern what, um, how do you break apart information in the digital age that they consume over the internet as well as social media. So they can break it apart okay. and decide for themselves what is credible and what is not. But how will they do that? I mean, how do you tell a story that's fake from one that's real? And what does it mean to be fake? Well, one of the things that I grew up learning is how do you use uh, footnotes and citations in order to verify the facts that I was reading. One of the things that we know is that on online sources, we can't really do that. It's very difficult. So one of the things it's going to do is give them the skills on how to research uh, who owns a particular domain name. You know, is it the t real Fox News Twitter handle with the check mark, or it, it, or it isn't? Because um, a lot of people are having a tough time telling, is this really Fox News or is this some other site? Oftentimes, people believe the false site or the false Twitter account more than they do the real thing. So this isn't about um, telling them what to believe. It's just giving, giving them the skills so that they can actually distinguish for themselves but, uh, what is real and what is fake. What that means to be false. I mean, does that mean that the content on the site is false if you don't like the domain name? I mean, wh what does false mean? No, it means that, you know, one of the things, it's not about, false means sometimes there's some websites that give you a little bit of real information, a little bit of fake information, and they, they kind of blur it all together. I know Fox News would never do that. You guys try to give them the real facts, just like every other news station according to their, uh, to their um, mission, right? So we're not um, here to basically say that this is automatically fake news, but we want people to look at every piece of information they're reading online that they should have been done, doing for a long time with a critical eye and start asking more questions. Is this something that is I should believe? Is it from reputable sources? Or do the facts back up the claims? I mean, I guess a lot of questions come to mind. First among them, why can't they do that themselves? Why are you assuming they don't already do that? Who are you to make that decision? But you keep dodging the core question, which is, how do you know what's fake and what's real? I mean, that's at the center of this. It's the fake news bill. What's fake news? And I still, I, I, I'm not getting it from what you just said. Well, there's, I mean, for uh, example, BuzzFeed, which is a big website, billion dollar mm -hmm. website, just released a, a 35 page dossier purportedly on Donald Trump, purportedly from Russia. Is that fake or real in your judgment? Well, one of the things I try to do is look at every, every story with a uh, critical eye, and then I try to do more research on it. I don't automatically believe everything that I read, um, okay. but I do want to make sure that we kind of break it apart. I want our students to be prepared. You know, this is a digital age where we get more of our information through online and social media resources than we do from um, books and newspapers. In the past, we even had to question books and newspapers, but for some reason, we're in an age where people think just because they read it online, they believe it's real. And that is well, a big problem, because if well, we can't well, agree can, can on... Can I stop you there? How do you yeah. know that people believe what... The, I mean, you seem to have a pretty low opinion of the intelligence of your constituents. Why do you think that the people who vote for you, your voters in California, believe everything they read? Do you have evidence for that, that they're that dumb? Uh, Carlson, you're putting words in my mouth. No, I never said, said that. What I believe, believe is what they that, read, and you know, they we're, we're, we're trying you know to do is prepare 
what we're trying to do is prepare our youth for a digital age. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. It's like when we're uh, when technology was changing and people started using computers, we wanted them to learn how to use a computer so that they can be competitive, so they can actually uh, be able to go and get a job and be able to adapt to the changing environment. It's the same thing. We're trying to make sure that our kids have the skills necessary to distinguish what um, information from different sources, to take it, to analyze it, and then to decide for themselves, for okay, themselves, what is a, a real so story and what is a fake story. He here's the problem. Value judgments come into play. Subjective judgments play a role in calculating what is real and what is fake, what is true and what is false. And I keep asking you to explain the criteria for making that determination and you're not, either because you don't know what it is yourself. I asked you, do you believe, for example, that dossier that BuzzFeed and CNN ran with two days ago is real or fake? And you wouldn't answer. So oh, you see the problem I, uh, here. Because I haven't, first, I haven't read it, number one. Number two, I'm not going to make a claim on something that I haven't read and I okay, haven't had fair. a chance to actually verify. That, that's so. totally fine, but you still, no, and I wouldn't ask you to. But you still haven't answered the key question, which is, what does it mean to be fake news? I mean, well, your bill is called the fake news it's bill, and I'm worried because so, you have power. You're a politician, and you're telling me that yeah. some news should be disregarded. Why wouldn't that make For, me nervous? No, I'm not saying uh, some news should be disregarded um, because they provide a particular point of view. That's what you're implying. I'm not implying that. What I'm telling you is I think that people do need to know, is this story that they're reading on Facebook or Twitter, is this actually like the headline, if they read the headline, is that a headline they actually use from a, a particular story five months ago that they're just using because it's catchy and it actually gets people's attention? Is it right. actually the fact that they're saying that, um, Tucker Carlson went to school in Alabama, which I don't know if he did. Is that real? So is that something okay. they should actually be able to okay. verify? So I, I That's guess what I'm trying to do. That people under 18 are probably a little more sophisticated about digital media than either you or I is. Here's what they don't know enough about math. Right. And in Los Angeles, which you represent, almost none of the kids know how to do math. 29% of the students in the Los Angeles Unified School District met the math standards last year. Among black students, it was 18%. So why would you be spending any time on fake news, which you can't even define, when only 18% of your African-American students can do math up to standards? Shouldn't you be more worried about that or no? Tucker, what we try to do is make sure that we provide the curriculum that the school districts want to implore. So we're not mandating that the, um, under my bill, AB 155, that they have to incorporate the civic online reasoning. What it basically says that they're going to develop a curriculum with the experts with public input that they're going to, um, regarding civic online reasoning, and then the school districts have a choice if they want to include it or not. We're not okay. mandating it. We're actually okay, giving them an option. Really, and that's really, what, really quickly, have you introduced any bills to improve the math scores? in your district? 18% of black kids meet the standard? Have you, how many piece of legislation have you introduced to improve that number? Hey, uh, Tucker, I think that's a, uh, I've done different things to make sure that we invest more dollars into the classrooms and disadvantaged right. students so that the money stays there so that they do improve their test scores. And we have no, seen them not. improve their test and scores and over time. So these no, are two no, different things. And I believe that, the, um, that you can actually accomplish both at the same time. Well, you're not accomplishing. I just read the test scores from the L.A. Unified School District, and they're going down, unfortunately, and that's sad. Thanks a lot, Assemblyman. Appreciate it.